Bravado Ninja. Welcome to Pilot Ninja, a content series where we uncover things that frankly we couldn't find on the internet when we were learning how to use Pardot. We'll go through tips and tricks, pitfalls, things to look out for because with automation things can go wrong, but things can go really, really right and they can help you drive great business results through the use of Pardot and the Salesforce platform. So get stuck in, enjoy, please give us feedback because a lot of the um, content will be driven by user feedback and let us know how you go. Ooh. Cheers. Hey everyone, today we are going through how to set up the new email builder that's been released in the uh, most recent release from Salesforce and ultimately Pardot. So this email builder is brand new functionality for all Pardot users and we've been waiting for it for a long time, so we're very excited. For the moment, it's only available for list emails, but it's a step in the right direction. So there are a few things that we need to do to enable the Lightning Email Builder. And the first step, there's also you know, steps available on the on the help site, but it's essentially just a little bit more fleshed out to what you see here. So to get there, you go to the cogwheel on the top right hand side of your screen and you uh, click on it and then you click on setup and then it'll take you to the setup screen and on the left hand side in the quick, quick find box, just type in Pardot and then in the Pardot section, you'll see email setup and that's where we need to get to. So there are a couple of prerequisites that are required for this feature to be available to you. The first one is you need to have connected campaigns set up and synced. And then the second one is you need to have activated handlebar merge language for your emails. Pardot about a year ago released a new um, email language for uh, within their email builder, which aligns with how Salesforce emails um, are built and written. And this is ultimately for this sort of phase over to be able to have everything on the one lightning platform. So once you've got those two and you know, there's buttons on the right hand side that say find out how that'll tell you how to get there. It's all very straightforward. Now, if we go back to the setup screen, Uh, the first step here is adding a domain. So first of all, you need to have a system admin help you or if you have system admin access, you can get to this screen. But to set up the domain on your company's uh, domain, you will need, I mean, I certainly don't know how to do it and I haven't bothered to learn, but we obviously have people in our team that understand that side and it's usually the IT team. So in this instance, I've got my business partner, Arnold, who understands uh, web and IT very well. So he's gonna help us set up uh, or show you how we have set up this CNAME um, on, on our domain. So over to you, Arnold. Thanks, Theo. So as part of setting up the domain, um, which is the first step for file hosting, You'll notice on the right hand side, there is a button to manage domains. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to click on that button. Now that's going to load up a brand new page. And when it loads up the page, it is actually going to show you all the available domains that you have inside Salesforce. Now for this particular uh, domain, we have a preliminary set one up and I'm going to walk you through what has been set up. So in this case, we're using the subdomain called pardot.outinthecloud.com. It needs to be a subdomain for your web domain. And your web domain is used on emails. It's used for your website. Um, if you go to outinthecloud.com, you'll get to our website and that is live. If you want, you can use another subdomain that is not related, uh, but I wouldn't recommend that. Now, in here, if I click the edit button, it is going to take me to the page um, where it will ask you to enter the domain you would like to use. And this is the domain that we have chosen because it's not being used anywhere else. Once you select that, uh, the next item that you will need to select is the HTTPS option. And uh, by all means, uh, make sure you select the one um, where the content is delivered by the Salesforce CDN. 
Um, that way you don't have to set up one of these individual HTTPS items. Now, up the top you'll notice there are a set of instructions of how you can add a new domain. When you add a new domain, you can pick any domain you like, provided you own that domain. Um, and what you need to do is you need to set up a CNAME record. Um, and for each of your Salesforce instances, there will be a different CNAME record uh, that we need to add. So in here, you'll see the domain name says pardot.outinthecouds.com. And I will show you what we have done uh, based on these instructions in here. So I'm going to log into our DNS um, that controls our domain. Now in the DNS, uh, we're using Cloudflare. You might be using something else like GoDaddy, Crazy Domains, Venture IP, or one of the numerous hosting providers that are available. If we scroll further down, I have already added uh, the part of piece, which is here. Now if I click edit on this record, you will notice that the C name says Pardot and that means it is pardot.outinthecouds.com. And in here where it says target or wherever it needs to point to, I have followed the convention in Salesforce. So it'll ask you to put in your proper domain that you're looking to forward, followed by dot. And this is the piece that is going to be unique. Um, I'm gonna go into Salesforce now and actually show you that it does say 00D and ends in UAI. So if I go back to domains, this is um, the item that I'm referring to. It starts with 00D and ends in UAI. So I've essentially just added pardot.outinthecouds.com here, which is where you put the domain and copy the rest of it and paste it. Once you've added that in, you can click save. And once you've clicked save, this is when you will be able to properly add the domain. Now remember, once you add the domain, it is going to take, in some cases, up to 48 hours for Salesforce to pick it up. So if you try it for the first time and you get an error message, just be patient. Um, come back in another 24 to 48 hours and then add it in um, once you have added that to your DNS file. So I'm gonna go back a step here now and we're gonna fast forward. And at this point in time, um, we've got the status saying awaiting activation, which means Salesforce has validated that we own this domain and therefore we can use it. All you need to do is click on activate. And once you do that, it'll do a few things in the background and it should come up with a success page. So as you can see now, it has come up with a success page saying activation was successful. And this is the domain name that we had. And you can see that the HTTPS, which is very important for emails, is going to be delivered by Salesforce. Uh, underneath the provisioning status, you'll also find complete and this is how you know that you've successfully completed this step. So what I'll do now, once this step has been completed, there are a number of other items that we need to look at as part of the email setup. And I'm gonna pass over to Theo to explain these. Thanks, Theo. Thanks so much, Arnold. And you can see also um, within that DNS setup, uh, that it showed that it was created by my user. So whichever user actually creates um, the domain, they will be notified once Salesforce has made that connection with your domain. So you don't have to go back and keep checking, you actually get an email. Whoever creates that um, that, that domain within Salesforce, you'll get, you'll get an email once it's ready for you to click activate. So if we go back into the setup, Next, we need to create a workspace and a channel within Salesforce CMS. So we're gonna click on the open CMS button and that will open up your Salesforce CMS. So the first thing you wanna do is add a workspace. We've already done that. So just following the wizard will allow you to um, get that going quite easily. Once you've created that, you wanna create a channel. So 
you'll be able to get there a couple of ways, but the fastest way for us, there's just a little drop down here and you can click on CMS channels. Now we will create one with you. Uh, we've already got one that we're using, which is here. You can see we've run a few of these sort of demo training sessions, uh, but we'll create one. You wanna make sure it's public. And then once you've created it, you wanna edit it and go into domain, make sure you enable the domain you've selected for your um, part of email activity. Press save, that'll let you know once it's all good to go. And then the last step is going back into the workplace that you've created, which for us is this one. Go to channels and then add channel, demo for add, and it'll let you know once it's added, we're good to go. So now that we've got a domain set up, obviously we've got all our prerequisites done. We've set up our workspace and channel. It'll now ask you to um, select the channel. So we've already selected one. So if we go to none, it'll, so this is how we'll um, show first time up. Select channel, pick the one you've created. And remember, I had a few channels in that list the reason when I dropped down that arrow just then and only part of emails came up is the that's the only one I've enabled on the domain. That's why there was only one option, but there were many channels. Cool. Once you've done that, you, we're almost finished. You want to come to this part of the screen, create permission set, literally press this button. It'll take you to the last step of creating the permission set that's required with all the right settings. All you got to do is press save. And the last step um, in this process is clicking manage assignments. It'll take you to the permission set where you can, uh, and then you just click manage assignments and you can choose who is to have this permission set. Now, remember, as I said, um, you will need Salesforce admin uh, level access or a Salesforce admin to help you along this process. So get it, having all of that set up will then enable you, or it should enable you to look for an email content uh, module in the, in the app launcher where you'll be able to start using um, the email builder, which will do another session on actually how to use the email builder itself. One last thing to be wary of, if this does not, show up in the app launcher what you will need to do is you'll need to go back into setup go into profiles in the quick find box find whichever profile uh, the users that will need access to the content builder are using in this instance just move this out of the way i'm using system admin Then you want to edit this profile so that it can see the email content tab. So the fastest way, I just on a Mac, Command F, see I've already got email template up there. So email content, and it'll take you, this is the one you want. So when we configured it, it was set to tab hidden. We want to put it to default on, go to the bottom of the screen, press save, and then it'll, it'll show. Thanks so much for your attention. Hope that all made sense for you. Please feel free to reach out um, if you have any questions and please make sure you watch the next one regarding how to build an email using this exciting new email template builder. Cheers. Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode. We hope you got a lot of value out of it. Please don't forget to subscribe and engage with the content because a lot of it is driven by you guys, the user. So we need to know your feedback. Cheers.